Well, folks, once again, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Captain Boat Builder. I'd like to tell you that I'm on some remote Pacific island right now, enjoying the winter, but in fact, I'm not. What you see behind me is just a beautiful backdrop hanging on the window in my little sunroom. I got this for Christmas from my daughter. And she gave it to me so I could think that I was tropical instead of being here in the Southeast, going through another gray winter. But back to the video. Today, number 16, I'm calling this one painting and little things. Yes, I'm still painting, still sanding and continuing on, but I'm starting to get finished. I'm pleased with the result. And we have a few other little things that have been underway. So I hope you enjoy this episode. Again, number 16, painting and little things. Just wanted to show you what I've been doing with the uh, installation of the rudder and the tiller. I'll start with the uh, gudgeon. You can see it's a uh, one piece unit. This comes from Duckworks out on the West Coast. They have a pretty good website. You can order this with the uh, pintles. These are the three quarter inch pintles. It's three quarters of an inch from one side to the other. Uh, you get the uh, gudgeon and the two pintles together as, as a unit. Uh, I decided to do this for a couple of reasons. You can see how uh, the rudder is displaced from the transom uh, by about three inches, maybe two and a half to three inches. So the rudder is just a little bit aft of the boat. And if you look at the setup that they have for the uh, pop-up rudder, the pop-up rudder, um, the, the setup that's in the plans actually displaces the rudder like this from the transom. So I'm hoping that this will uh, wind up with a good balance of the boat for the steering. Another thing I did, uh, and this is strictly cosmetic, you can see here, I've put this uh, large uh, white plastic disc. I have one on both sides. And the reason I did this is because I'm gonna be raising the tiller up and down. You moving the tiller up and down. And I realized that the uh, inside of the tiller uh, was gonna scratch the top of the rudder blade because everything's gonna be varnished and varnish is fairly soft. So uh, these plastic discs act like giant washers and uh, separate the tiller from the, from the rudder head so there won't be any scratching. And again, uh, in the interest of complete disclosure, I wanted to show you a mistake that I've made. If you look, I'm not sure if you can exactly see it, but remember that the yellow string is the center line of the boat. And if you look right here, you can see that the rudder is actually displaced a little bit to the left side of the boat. It's not quite so obvious when you look at the transom pieces. Now, as I back away, you'll be able to see that I was able to get the rudder, at least to my eye and to all the measurements that I've done, I was able to get the rudder perfectly uh, perpendicular um, to, the, uh, to the shape of the hull. And uh, also you can see here that it's just displaced a little bit to the left in this picture. And the, you can see that the gudgeon is just a little bit to the left. And the reason for this is that I wanted to be sure to get the rudder straight. And I wanted to get it to track as closely as I could uh, directly behind the dagger board. But even though during the construction, I checked again and again and again for twist, you can see that I did wind up with a little bit of twist in the transom. So the mounting of the gudgeon plate was slightly skewed off a little bit, but the whole idea is to get the rudder perfectly straight up and down. It was also fairly, uh, it was fairly easy to get the rudder um, straight up and down on this axis. You want the blade to be completely vertical. So this is uh, what I've done with the rudder and the tiller. 
I haven't started the varnishing yet so I can get a super good finish on it but again and here's a little shot you can see just a little bit more detail of how the gudgeon is slightly skewed because the transom is off center and that's because I had some twist in the hull during the beginning of the construction which I did not quite notice and now I'm stuck with it. So like many things with this boat you just continue to make little corrections. I'm getting ready to install this uh, mini suction baler. Uh, it's made by a company called Anderson. The original design, uh, it's from Denmark. The original design uh, was done by a guy named Paul Elfstrom, probably one of the greatest uh, dinghy racers ever. Unfortunately, he's passed away. Uh, I think he won more championships in the Finn class than anybody ever to this day. Anyhow, the original design was his. Uh, it's now um, made by a company called Anderson. It's available through Ronstan or uh, other order services. You may all be familiar with these suction balers, but for those of you who aren't, I just wanted to show you what this thing looks like. This is what it looks like in the open position. And here you can see this is the edge that's on the hull. And this is the part that projects under the hull. And as you go through the water, suction is created and there's a tiny little door right here that opens and the water gets sucked out. Now this door is very lightweight. It's all stainless steel, so it never rusts. But when you slow down and there's not enough suction or when you stop, the door closes. You can see how it's designed. It closes just right. Uh, when you're not moving, it will let a little bit of water in, but not much. And uh, you can see it's about uh, three and three quarters inches long. This is the smallest of the balers that they make. And I believe that it is big enough. This is the baler in the closed position. And uh, as I mentioned before, uh, if you step on this and you're barefooted, it's gonna hurt a lot. So you can either wear shoes or just be very careful. The, uh, this mounts from the outside. So when you look at the hull, on the bottom. This plate is what you're going to see on the bottom of the boat. And I'm going to be mounting it, as I said before, uh, in the aft part of the boat. You can see roughly where it's going to go. That's the back uh, cross support. They send you a nice little cardboard template so you know how to cut the hole. You can see that the hole is not very large. So the baler is going to sit pretty much right here in the back of the boat on the center line, right about there. As I said before, I think this is pretty much where the water accumulates. And uh, this Viola 14 looks like uh, in choppy conditions, moderate chop. <clears throat> There's gonna be quite a bit of spray that comes in the boat. So you may be glad you have one of these things to continuously suck the water out of the back of the boat so you don't have to do it with a scooper or a sponge. I just wanted to show you something that I did in my previous build that worked out quite well. You can see here I've got the boat on its side on the sawhorses held in place with uh, some wood pieces that are clamped and padded. And the reason that I'm doing this, putting the boat on its side, is so that I can paint these surfaces right here. This is the side of the flotation tank. And back here you've got the side of the aft section of the hull and also the same up in the bow. The idea is that these can be sanded and uh, painted almost flat so the paint can be put on nice and smooth, almost no chance for runs and you'll get a really really smooth finish plus you also are working at a very comfortable level. Around here on the other side, you can see I've got the uh, hull supported and braced with two by fours padded with towels. With the boat on this side, it also gives me the opportunity to do some work. This is the hole for the baler. So I can get this sanded and finished, get it just the right size for the baler to go in. And then the most important part, let me see if it'll focus here, it's right here. This is just raw plywood as I cut in the hole. There's fiberglass on this side, 
and there's fiberglass on that side, but this is raw plywood. So I wanna be sure that I'm sanding this smooth and probably saturating it with two or three coats of epoxy at least before I do the touch-up painting to be sure that no water ever penetrates. And the same is true here in the slot. This is the slot for the dagger board. This area is gonna be sanded smooth and it's gonna be sealed with more epoxy and paint also to make sure that there is no water penetration into this edge grain of the plywood. So that's why I've got the boat on its side like this. I think it just makes it a lot easier to work on everything. Just one little note that I'd like to add now. Again, I'm always trying to point out my own mistakes, maybe make things a little bit better or a little bit easier for you, whatever kind of boat you're building. Uh, you can see the boat's still on its side. I'm still painting these flat surfaces right here, the side of the tank, the hull. It's actually going quite well but I've been baffled uh, on this build and also on my previous build. I've been baffled by the um, amount of very fine dust that shows up in the paint surfaces and I haven't been able to stop it until now. I vacuum everything obsessively. I wipe the surfaces down with uh, microfiber cloths that are very lightly saturated with mineral spirits. Uh, I've used uh, tack rags, a lot of these waxy tack rags that work perfectly, and I still wasn't able to get this fine dust that was showing up in the finish. And quite by accident, I have discovered the problem. If you look here in my basement and you look up into the ducting, you will see right there, it's kind of crude, but it's a takeoff on the main heating system for the first floor, I was taking a little hot air off into the basement to keep the basement nice and toasty. But what I'm realizing now is that when I've been painting the boat and you can see the angle, you can see how this thing points, yes it does, directly at the boat. So what I've decided is that when the air conditioning cycles off and on, not only does it circulate the air in the basement, and potentially stir up dust, but it also blows uh, undoubtedly fine dust that's in the air conditioning system in spite of the massive filters that I have. So I experimented the other day and turned the system off while I was painting, uh, vacuuming and uh, using the tack rag and everything. And I've achieved a finish that has almost no dust in it, quite nice. And so I realized that that is the culprit, the, uh, ducting. So if you have any kind of airflow going on in your basement or shed or garage or wherever you're building your boat, try to stop the airflow as much as possible. And that should help you a lot with dust that shows up in the finish with the paint and the varnish. I'm just about ready to close out this particular episode. As you can see, I've got the boat turned over and the other side, the starboard side now is the low side. Just wanted to show you, I'm almost finished completely with the interior painting. All the side work is done. I have one more finished coat on the bottom panels. That would be these sections going forward. Putting the boat on its side uh, really, really paid big dividends, mostly in terms of getting a beautiful finish, not worrying about runs. The paint just laid out perfectly. I have really nice coverage. I'm quite pleased with the result and we've got a lot of gloss and a lot of smooth surfaces looks just fine so it's been slow it's been very slow but to me it's been worth it I'm very pleased with the finished product in the next episode I'm going to be continuing the painting you're probably getting bored but it's a, an important part of the finish process I'm going to be putting the boat on lower sawhorses, probably half the height of these. This portion of the boat, this lower edge right here on the starboard side, I'm gonna start out with that almost touching the basement floor. And the reason for that is that I want this surface, the top sides, I want these to be lower so they're easier to work on. I'm gonna lean the boat a little bit more vertically so there'll be less chance of running. I'm gonna start with this border. This will be finished with extra coats of white and this will be finished in blue. 
Uh, it's kind of hard to see the color because it's got so much dust on it right now, but it's really a beautiful, brilliant shade of blue, very much like the Gulf Stream. So that's where I'm headed in the next episode. I'll be painting the top sides, finishing off a few little projects. I'll be installing the baler right here, and I'm going to be installing these access ports port and starboard finishing that up and everything's starting to come together so i hope you've enjoyed these episodes if you have any questions or comments uh, please uh, feel free to uh, ask questions or make comments as you like I, I like to get input i'm especially interested to know if any of this has helped anybody in any way with their projects so uh, once again thanks for watching and Captain Boatbuilder saying so long for now.